Meanwhile, Martina goes into the final as the senior member of a field of four semifinalists here who averaged 30 years in age. And at the opposite end of the scale, the Women's Tennis Association continues to consider a minimum age limit for players, the subject front and center, of course, as the result of the experience of Jennifer Capriotti, who after having left tennis for several months, was arrested on May 16 of this year at the Carl Gables Inn in Carl Gables, Florida, Greater Miami. It was here that the arrest took place and where all of the wire service hoopla began. From this point, Jennifer went immediately into treatment at the Addiction Center at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami Beach. And after having been treated there, we're told that she is now out of uh, that treatment and in an aftercare program. For more on Jennifer Capriotti, her experience, and what she means to tennis now, here's Chris Collinsworth at your service. At the age of 13, Jennifer Capriotti exploded onto the world stage with her booming smile and charming ground strokes. We couldn't get enough of her. We wanted to go along for the ride, and she wanted to have us with her. But somewhere, something went wrong. We were no longer welcome. Neither were her friends, neither was her family. Jennifer decided that she needed to be normal. Jennifer decided that she had to get away from tennis and uh, wanted to be just like everybody else and she uh, she wanted to disappear and what happened was she uh, she disappeared with the wrong crowd I think she's been crying for help for a long time Jennifer needed to take a break she, when she finally did take a break I thought it was almost two years too late and uh, I think she's been led astray but who is at fault how could one so innocent fall so far much of the blame has been directed at her parents for letting her turn professional too soon. Here you are, you're maybe from a, a lower income, you know, and, and you bring up a child, a daughter or a son, and all of a sudden these offers start coming in for dollars that are beyond your imagination. It just absorbs into your skin and makes it smoothie. <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, here's a chance in two or three years that I could set my daughter or son up for life. You know, do I take it or not? And most of the time, they grab it. Perhaps the most puzzling question is, what happened to her friends? She was in Boca Raton, and it seemed actually that she was sort of getting her life back together again. She was hitting tennis ball with friends. She was working out. Um, so she had a, a structure of friends away from tennis, away from the pressures of her family, uh, that were looking out for her best interest and trying to get her involved in tennis in a positive way. The fact is, is that she also had another group of friends who, uh, who didn't have her best interests at heart, who, whose best interests were, you know, at having a good time. Regardless of how it happened or why it happened, Jennifer Capriotti has a problem. Perhaps not so much with drugs or lifestyle, but with direction. For if she is truly as repulsed by the game of tennis as she claims, what's next? Surely that hotel room in Coral Gables isn't the answer. I, I feel sorry for her because uh, she's been thrusted into a situation that really uh, most 14, 15, or 16 year old girls shouldn't, shouldn't have to deal with and uh, uh, the pressure has obviously gotten to her and uh, there's many more things important than, uh, than tennis and I hope she realizes that now and I hope her family realizes that now. In fact I did an interview about Jennifer Capriotti a couple of weeks ago and the, and the interviewer said um, well, here's a player that obviously always hated tennis and was pushed into it, and now look what's happened. And I said, well, actually, you're totally wrong there. Because I said, um, I played with her when, I, when she was nine years old. And here was a girl that came on the court. I've never seen anybody that loved the game as much. She came on with a smile every time she hit the ball. It was like, this is the greatest thing in the world. She loved the game. And here you are now, she doesn't want to step on the court. I don't think Jennifer is a bad girl. She had a situation where she simply wanted to ignore that she was a superstar. This guy who had been with her all night had no idea who she was, and then it was sort of blurted out that she was Jennifer Capriotti. And he called, he said, my God, you're famous. And that was, that was the last thing she wanted to hear. You know, she just wanted to be like everybody else. Unfortunately, now she's more famous than ever. The story is a personal one about Jennifer Capriotti, but the overwhelming and predictable media reflex has been to generalize from Jennifer and turn her into a statement on young women in women's tennis. How dangerous, how productive is that? Not very productive. The media always picks the exception. You take a lot of the top ten players 
or top players. It's Mary Jo Fernandez, Groff. Many of the players that we see playing now started when they were 13 and 14, and they're fine. You knew Jennifer when she was 12, 13, 12. 14. You've known her recently. Would it make you happy, under the right circumstances, to see her playing tennis again? I would love to see her play tennis if that's what she wants. But first, we always help the human being. Tennis is really very secondary. Are you satisfied she's getting the kind of help she needs right now? I don't know. I really don't know. Nobody's in contact. We can't reach the people, so we can't reach Denise or Stefan or, Je or Jennifer. And only time will tell what happens to bring the close to that particular story.